Hello everyone, um, it's the 19th of November and today is actually International Men's Day. Now it's useful to give a little bit of background about this event before going into my thoughts on it and uh, some things I want to reflect on. Um, so uh, from the Wikipedia article, um, the event was inaugurated in 1992 uh, by Thomas Oster. There's not much information about him. Um, uh, so the project of International Men's Day was conceived one year earlier on the 8th of February 1991. The project was reinitialized in 1999 in Trinidad and Tobago. The longest running celebration of International Men's Day is in Malta, where events have occurred since uh, February 1994. Now, as Malta was the only country that observed the February day of celebrating men and their contribution to society, the Maltese um, AMR committee uh, I'm not sure what AMR stands for, but uh, they voted in 2009 to shift the day to the 19th of November. Uh, but I think the real initialization of this February event was by Jerome Tillich Singh. He revived the event and he chose November the 19th, which is his father's birthday, and also to celebrate the date in 1989, Trinidad and Tobago's football team united the country to enter the World Cup. Uh, but Dr. Tillich Singh has, I, I feel, uh, brought up the very positive to the world by initialising this. Um, he said of IMD and its grassroots activists, they're striving for gender equality and patiently attempt to remove the negative images and stigma associated with men in our society. And this is interesting, I didn't realise this, but unlike International Women's Day, which is on March the 8th, International Men's Day is not recognised by the UN officially and it observes <coughs> World Toilet Day on November the 19th, which is a looking at uh, sanitation issues around the world. Um, important, no doubt, but uh, I think it's unfortunate that there isn't something recognised at the UN, even if it's not this day, it should be another day. Um, now, uh, I'm going to address some of the questions that have been levelled against this event that still sometimes come up. Um, you sometimes get people um, who say, why do we need an International Men's Day? It tends to come from uh, feminist courts. Why do we need an International Men's Day? Men have all the power. Men have every other day of the year. Well, that's a highly contentious statement. Um, whatever you think of patriarchy and men in power, the point of this day is to raise awareness of issues that men face. Now, it's not that those issues should only be raised in one day. They should be, you know, raised all the time. But I think to have one day with a focus on men is a very positive thing because it just brings awareness of the issues uh, a little bit more than they might usually get. Um, and why shouldn't there be a day to celebrate uh, half the world's population? By the way, for the record, I'm fully 100% behind International Women's Day. I also think that's a good event. Very important. Um, but I, I would definitely counter that push back against this day that it's somehow not needed. Um, we can look at the facts. We can look at the fact that in developed countries, at least, I'm not sure what the situation is in developing countries. I honestly haven't looked at that in detail, so I can't comment. But certainly in the case of developed countries, the fact remains that most suicides are male. Most fatal workplace accidents are men. Um, far more men are incarcerated than women. And granted, more men commit violent crime than women, so that's the caveat there. Um, but I don't think sentencing is equal. I think uh, too often women get lenient sentences that a man wouldn't get, just wouldn't. Um, there are all those issues. But I also think today shouldn't just be, you know, a sort of thing to say... And, you know, I totally agree with what Mr. Telek Singh said, that this is, shouldn't be in opposition to International Women's Day. This event shouldn't be as something hostile to women. It's it's rather a day for men, by men, to talk about men. That's all. It's nothing in you know, hostility to women. Um, that's why I'm a little bit critical of some of the way it's promoted, because I feel that some feminists have hijacked it to, to talk about what men should be. This should be a day for men to talk about men. Um, that's, you know, that should be the focus. Um, 
But I, I really think, you know, for me personally, I would put it this way. We sometimes say, we sometimes hear this debate, what does it mean to be a man today? Um, we hear a lot about uh, changing the social dynamic. We hear about the culture wars, right? Uh, particularly around issues of gender roles. That That's often brought up when it comes to the culture wars. Speaking personally, I have always been entirely comfortable with my masculinity. And I do not think that is a bad word. I say masculinity. Masculinity. Now... When I say that, I'm not talking about a sort of um, necessarily forceful masculinity that this is this is the way it has to be and all other opinions are invalid. I'm saying that for me, masculinity is a positive thing because I think we sometimes hear this term um, toxic masculinity referring to a particular sort of male culture. Now, I'm not going to deny that there is a problem there. I'm not going to deny that there are some men who treat other people extremely badly. They treat other men badly. They also treat women badly. And those guys are a disgrace. You know, they they are responsible for a lot of the negative imagery around men. I'm talking about guys who um, think that they're being tough by being in a gang and throwing their weight around. I'm talking about guys who think it is um macho to to rape girls or to sexually assault women um you know that sort of toxic masculinity should be countered and it should be countered by men just as much as as women but i will never ever ever apologize for saying that i think masculinity is something that needs to be defended okay because i think there's this idea that some feminists have that because there's toxic masculinity, because there's these um, negative traits, you know, it could be like a group of guys who have drank too much and they're throwing the weight around. Um, that sort of thing, I think, is negative. Um, but that ignores many, many positive aspects of masculinity. And I, I think there's this notion that the opposite of that needs to be some sort of passive... Um, almost feminized manhood, which I am um, I totally disagree with that premise. Now, if a man is more effeminate, um, I, I'm not going to judge him. You know, he has his own journey. That's that's his life. As long as he's not hurting other people, it's um, you know I'm not going to judge him. Uh, you get that in some gay relationships, and I, uh, my best friend is gay, so I've got a little bit of insight into this. And he is uh, a feminine gay man. In fact, I had a little talk up for me yesterday about this. I said, you know, um, International Men's Day tomorrow. I said, oh, no, that's not for me. I said, it is. You're, you're male. Um, this is for all men. And this is the point about International Men's Day. It's for all men. It's for gay men. It's for straight men. It's for all men. Um, because there's so many issues that affect men. I mean, I would say, for example, in the case of gay men, you know, there's persecution that gay men face. This day should also highlight those sort of issues. Um, there's lots of areas around that to look at. Um, I would say, though, in terms of the notion of masculinity and the traditional concept of masculinity, it tends to be, you know, that you won't find a single definition of it. It's a complex thing. But I guess uh, one that's often spoken about is responsibility and the man being the provider to the family. And that's that's something that's seen all over the world in pretty much every society, or I would say most societies, um, east and west, north and south, um, really throughout history. Um, that lecture that Will Nolan gave on the patriarchy was very interesting. Um, some of the editing wasn't wonderful, but it was, um, it was an interesting lecture. This is what I'm referring to is the Eton, I think it was Eton, uh, professor who gave a lecture about patriarchy to his students and received a backlash for that um or at least a backlash from the college um he got a lot of support as well but you know that traditional concept of masculinity about being the provider about being responsible uh i think that's very true um but it, it isn't the whole it's not everything you know not every man is a father 
not every man uh, has children not every man is in that position but then you know i mean i'm not so rather i see my masculinity as as certainly being that one day but for now it's about being true to my values standing up for my conviction and looking out for others it's about not turning a blind eye to injustice as well that, that's a very important thing to me um you know we can't tackle every cause at once we just can't and it is critical for the sake of mental health i think to have downtime but you have to be brave enough to stand up for your conviction when needed this is not about going in like a battle axe and always getting into verbal confrontations that's not what i'm talking about i'm saying that you cannot turn a blind eye to matters of conviction and i like to think i have always stood up for my conviction in one way or another um so these are the sort of things that i'm thinking of i think there's a mistake that's made that masculinity is just that negative masculinity but strong positive masculinity is a good thing and that is about strength it is about responsibility i mean that's what we need to push back against this idea that the opposite of negative masculinity is somehow um it cannot even be masculinity it has to be masculinity because you know you have to consider um let's say a man is leading a family or he has a family he has a wife and young children or a young child um and even if he doesn't you know if he's in any sort of position of responsibility um he has to be a strong character he has to have courage uh physical as well as mental i mean in the end of the day i would contend that if you have a group of people right let's say this is just a wild scenario i'm throwing out here let's say you have 50 people okay and it's kind of um a precarious situation or it's some sort of um remote setting and let's say um you're under attack from some sort of enemy okay i'm not going to put too many details in this because it's really a hypothetical but you know let's say in that group of people you have a lot of children and women and there's some men okay now uh women are equal to men so um, let me be clear about that uh equal in terms of human rights so they should be uh and a lot of those women will uh you know have the resilience the tenacity and the intelligence to also look at the situation but being realistic if you need a physical force to counter that threat then it's going to be the men in the group unquestionably unquestionably this is not to say there aren't women who are physically tough and who can fight and who can defend themselves but i'm talking about averages here and I do believe that men and women are different but equal that's the way i look at it and you know i would never ever ever accept a situation where i could not protect uh the woman in my life and you know that's something that i think is very very much the core of being a man it's, it's not about being shackling it's not about controlling her but you know you have to know what your role is i'm not talking necessarily about rigid gender roles that's how i see it but i'm talking about what is right for the people involved now maybe there will be couples out there where uh the woman is just as physically tough as the guy um and if that works for them fine but i think that i think the masculinity over the years has been kind of um not dissolved it's not gone for sure it's not because there are many many um fathers brothers husbands boyfriends sons grandfathers out there who um you know they are really decent guys and there are decent men from from hard working fishermen farmers uh laborers right up to um statesmen who have the weight of nations on their backs so the responsibility may not be on the same scale but i would contend that there are a lot of good men in society i would contend there are more good men in this world than bad men but we've heard that phrase all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing 
I think the top truth in that. Um, but you know, this is not an exact science. This is not an exact definition, and that's good. It's something that should be discussed and debated and looked at in different ways. So I'll just close with this. You know, there's a poem uh, called Invictus. Uh, I might have quoted the film recently, which I watched, starring Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon. And it's uh, about the events in South Africa in the mid-1990s. This was uh, after Nelson Mandela was released, when he became president in 1994. Historic event. Um, South Africa was qualifying for the Rugby World Cup. And at that time, it was still a predominantly white team, with the exception of one player, uh, the Springboks. Uh, they, in many ways, from many South Africans, were a symbol of apartheid. Now, Mandela realised that to unite the nation, uh, this would be something that would be really, really worth looking at. So basically, the film, if you haven't seen it, it's a good movie. It's about how Mandela and um, the the main guy, um, the captain of the team, Pioneer, I forget the guy's first name, but um, they they sort of collectively got this united spirit of the nation behind them. Uh, it's a good film, it's very uplifting, but anyway, in the film, um, the rugby captain's wife has asked him, are you worried about tomorrow? Big match. And he says, no, that's taken care of one way or another, that's taken care of. I was thinking how this man spent 27 years in a tiny cell, came out ready to forgive the people who put him there. Anyway, it's a very moving film, but the poem Invictus is evoked in this film, and the poem is by, let me just get this right, uh, William Ernest Henley, who was a British Victorian poet. Uh, it's a beautiful poem. I mean, I'm not, I don't usually follow poetry, but this one is um, really worth considering. And it goes like this. Uh, well, this is very abridged, but these are some lines I think are, are wonderful. For my unconquerable soul, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. That's a bridge, there's like obviously full verses, but I think that's remarkable. And that poem inspired Nelson Mandela, which is why the film is so called. It also inspired other great men like Winston Churchill. Um, today, I think of brave men who, like Alexei Navalny, you know, currently languishing in a Russian jail, standing up against a brutal state. Uh, Alexei Navalny, to me, is the epitome of positive masculinity. This is a brave man. This is a tough man. Um, a man who stands up to do the right thing. I think of human rights lawyers around the world. I think of those good men who are, you know, protecting women, standing up for women and children. Um, so when it comes to masculinity, I would say, yes, there is a negative side there. Yes, there are some guys that are despicable. But as men, we need to stand up for positive masculinity. That's how I see it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to round this up. I do say happy International Men's Day. Um, I will always mark this event. Incidentally, I always mark International Women's Day, obviously in a different way. Um, that's about respecting women. That's you know an external thing because I'm not a woman. Um, but I, I love and respect women. International Men's Day is more internal because I am a man. I have a man's experience and this is uh this is how I see it. Thanks for watching.